Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the car culture in the United States and how it relates to institutional racism. You may think, okay, how are these things related? And one of the reasons I want to talk about this is that I don't hear much discussion in the public consciousness about this issue and the connection between them. And nowadays I've been hearing a lot of white people talking about institutional racism against other races, and how it's har like really harmful and how it's a major problem, and I think this is really great. I unfortunately though, I don't hear all that many people in our society at all talking about car culture in the United States. And I think that if more people started seeing the connection between these two issues, it could help both to address racism and to address other problems associated with car culture. So what do I mean by car culture? I mean the dependence of the United States of America on cars for transportation. Like the way our communities are structured in such a way to force car ownership and require car usage to get from point A to point B. So people need cars to get to jobs, people need cars to go shopping to get basic necessities, people need cars to socialize and do other important activities. And this is not true in all regions equally, uh, and it's not true in all countries. Like, um, part of the reason that we have this car dependence is how our communities are structured, and also that we don't have very good public transportation. These things all are sort of part of the system. Now how does this relate to racism? I was reading an article about car ownership by race, and I found it interesting and a little bit disturbing. There's a huge disparity in car ownership by race, in the United States, and it reflects economic disparities, but it extends beyond what you would normally predict from the economic disparities alone. The article I found said that only 7% of white households live without a car, but it was something like 24% of black households in the United States live without a car. And the figure for Latino households was somewhere around 17%, I don't remember what the figure was for Native American households, but it was also pretty, uh, pretty low around the figure for Latinos. And so, I was looking at this article, and the article was talking about how these figures are only a small portion of the disparity. That like, if you just look at those figures alone, it doesn't fully capture the disparity in car ownership between white households and black households and households of other racial minorities. In addition, there are disparities in the number of cars that people own. So like when you have a household, that might have two, three, four, or more people who are able to drive, but the household might only have one car, or they might have two cars, whereas like a white household might have two or three or more cars. So there's that disparity. There's another disparity though in the car's uh, condition. So like a lot of black families will own a car, but it won't always be in working condition. It won't be in working condition uh, as much of the time as a white household who owns one car. So this also creates more of a disparity in the ability of people of different races to use these cars for transportation. So how does this relate back to like the car dependence of the United States? Basically, when the U.S. is structured in such a way, to uh, require car use, that disproportionately hurts certain racial minorities, especially black people. Um, they are disproportionately affected by the dependence of the United States on cars. And this plays out in things like cutting of funding for public transportation. Like a lot of the places that I've lived, I've noticed that when I ride public transportation, there is a larger portion of black people riding public transportation than representative of the population in that area as a whole. In some areas, I'm like the only white person on the entire bus, and sometimes I'll be riding this bus through a predominantly white neighborhood, and it's all black people on the bus. It's like this very clearly segregated system in which white people have more access to cars, and most of the people who are forced to rely on public transportation are black, and they're sort of given the second class status in society by us having public transportation that is not really good, it is not really effective, it is not reliable, it doesn't run all that often, 
And I can say this because I've lived in different parts of the country, and I've also traveled to other countries. Like, I've traveled to Germany. Germany has friggin' amazing public transit. You can be in a small city in Germany, and you can use transit to get everywhere. Like, it's really great, and it makes me realize how much we're missing out on when you come back here. This is another reason why I feel passionately about ending the car culture in the United States, moving away from our dependence on automobiles, and promoting things like walkable communities, and bikeable communities, and promoting public transportation. Um, not only will it address this issue of institutional racism, it will like help alleviate it, but it also has all these other benefits. It, for example, promotes health, by encouraging people to spend time walking rather than spend time sitting in a car. It also reduces pollution, it reduces dependence on foreign oil, because that is the main source of fuel for all these cars people are driving. I also think it's more efficient economically. Like, if you look at the total GDP of the United States, and if you look at the average household expenditure, a huge portion of those things is spent on, on transportation. And if we were less dependent on cars, that might be a lower percentage of household expenditures. It might be a lower percentage of GDP. And what that means is that those resources and that economic activity could be put into more productive things. Like, if you think about time spent in a car, that money and time is just burned away. Basically, like, you're, you're in the car, the fuel is burned, and it's gone. Society has nothing to show for it once it's burned. And if you're sitting in traffic, or if you're driving on the road, like, okay, maybe you're enjoying the view, maybe you're relaxing a little bit if the traffic is light, but like, you're not really getting much out of it. It's sort of like dead time, dead use of resources. So I think that moving away from cars has all these different benefits. Uh, I'd like us to start making the connection of race, though, because I think that the two things are related, and I think that if you care about ending institutional racism in the United States, it is natural to support walkable communities, and support public transportation, and support policies that move away from our dependence on automobiles. Yeah, thank you.